Greetings Commanders and welcome back to another Elite Dangerous stream. I am Zach, one of the community managers here on Elite Dangerous and I am joined by another community manager, Mr. Bruce Garrido. How are you today, Bruce? Hello, Zach. I'm really well. Thank you, mate. How are you? Not bad. I'm looking forward to this stream. I knew I knew it was coming for maybe, maybe just over a week and uh, it's one that I've been looking forward to. Yeah, it should be good. Thank you everyone for joining us in the chat. Hopefully you're not getting tired of the new Wombo combo that is Zach and I. <laughs> Uh, we've been a pair now, I don't know, it's been like three streams, three I think, three yeah. or four, hat something like that. So uh, we scored the hat trick, but uh, hopefully you guys don't mind. Um, the Pro Rock PL says, no whiteboard. Sorry, mate. No whiteboard. No whiteboard, time. yeah. Um, although there is still not really any information on it for you guys, <laughs> besides the date of my MOT, which the Burr Pits um, paid close attention to and discerned that that's actually what I'm doing on Saturday. So uh, <laughs> not really big news for you guys. <laughs> um anyway to get sort of more on an elite dangerous topic uh what are we going to be up to today zach so we've got a, a pretty fun stream and that is with operation ida so we've got a couple of guests on from operation ida who are going to talk us through pretty much how how the operation founded um what they get up to and and how they how they really manage such huge undertakings that they do when when stations are in need of repair so it is going to be fun and we are going to be chatting to those lovely guests very soon but we've just got a, you know one or two things to go over first and that is pretty much the community goals Bruce do you want to quickly give a rundown of, of what the community goal is or at least the uh, the first part sure I can give you guys um the lowdown so if you haven't checked out the Galnet news yet you should because it will summarize it way better than I can but <laughs> um in, in a nutshell um nine stations were bombed during the uh, the Galactic Summit that occurred in Sirius um, at, at nine various, sorry, nine bombings occurred at uh, stations sort of around the uh, that area of the bubble, um, sending those stations into the burning state, which was uh, quickly responded to and doused. Um, and thankfully, many of you commanders helped in the evacuation yep. efforts at those stations. Um, and now we have entered the repair phase whereby we're delivering medical supplies to uh, the survivors. Mm-hmm. So um, there's basically this is it's quite a unique community goal because there are there are three variants to it. So um, Safeguard and Stella have partnered with three other organisations to reward pilots uh, who distribute medicines, like Bruce said, uh, in an effort to support the damaged starports. So there are three there are three breakdowns and three different sets of rewards. So I'll just quickly go through what each one is. So the first one is if you support Alliance starport survivors. Um, you will be rewarded with the top 75 will receive a permanent alley off system permit and a type 6 transporter. If you support the Imperial starport survivors, you will receive a permanent Akinar system permit and a fully engineered class 3 rating A shield generator with thermal and kinetic resistance. And if you support the Federation starport survivors, the top 75% will receive a permanent Sol system permit and a fully engineered class 3 rating a overcharged and armoured power plant. Um, don't forget, as always, you will need to sign up for the community goal before you deliver your goods for them to count. And as Bruce said, if you want to find out more, you can use um, exclamation point CG in the chat to head straight to the latest community goal information. Absolutely. And if you're on YouTube, I believe the link is community.elitedangerous.com. We'll take you to uh, the Galnet archives with the latest one. Hopefully at the top. Yeah. So yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun one. I think I know which one I'll be I'll be going for on my own account, and that's gonna be the um, the federation for the for the soul system permit, which I still don't have. Um, so it's a good chance to pick up a permanent soul permit if if you do require one. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So as we mentioned earlier, obviously some stations have been bombed, and. Um, it's just worth pointing out that the leaking Jowl station in the Sol system is, I believe, still burning because it sustained more critical damage than the rest of the stations. So there is still a chance um, to rescue people from, from the Sol station. But if you want to move on and do some repair uh, or medicine delivery, then the, the rest of the stations that were bombed will be your best bet. And of course, you can use the map in-game to see which stations those are. So apart from... Apart from delivering medicine to these stations, um, and apart from the community goal, there is another side to this. So, so as Bruce said, once stations have finished <laughs> finished burning, um, they they need repair, and one of the groups that 
uh, probably or definitely the most well-known group for for handling these situations is uh, a group called Operation Ida. And we have two guests on today um, who, are, who are quite, they might not say it themselves, but they're, they're, quite, they're quite high up in Operation Ida and they've got a lot of, a lot of good information for us. Um, so we just want to say a quick hello, an intro to Commander Ninja and Commander Blake A. So hello guys, how are you doing? Good evening. Nice to uh, be on the stream. Thanks guys. Hello everyone, thank you. Good evening. Chat, chat. let me know how the audio levels are. Hopefully everything's fine. But yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. Um, like I was saying to, to Blake earlier, being on with Operation Ida has always been, you know, since I joined Frontier, something that I wanted to do because Operation Ida were the first player group that I knew of because I, I saw the, the Fargoid attack uh, on, on plenty of, of starports. And I was like, okay, this is quite interesting that there's um, a group of players that have banded together to do this sort of in-game in-game group so can you just can you just um i guess commander ninja can you give us a rundown of of what you do um in operation ida so the whole point of uh, our existence is um organizing repairs we get yeah. together we uh, identify targets and uh, we point people in the right direction of uh, what what's needed um and how to go about doing it okay and Commander Blake A, can you give me a quick rundown of what you personally personally do on a, on a day-to-day -day basis in, in Operation Ida, at least when there's things happening? I do a little bit of research on where to go, how about doing stuff, how should we organize people, what would make us efficient, what would make us inefficient, and then provide that information to the team so that other people can do what they want to do better. Yep. So I... From what I've seen from my from my research into Operation Ida in the past in the past week, um, there is a lot there is a lot that goes into the organisation and um, and planning of of these specific fixes that we're going to talk about a bit later. But I guess before we jump into the game and and help out, I just want to quickly quickly ask. I always like to ask this when we have a guest on. So I guess we'll start with Commander Ninja. Um, how many hours would you say? Without looking immediately at Steam or whichever platform, how many hours would you say you've clocked in Elite? It's just under six thousand on this account. Nice, just on just on the one account. Any, I'm, I'm guessing the the other accounts nowhere near that number, or are we racking up on those as well? It's almost two thousand on the other. So yeah, that is an impressive That's... impressive number. And Commander Commander Blake, roughly speaking, three thousand hours still still a still a strong still a very strong number obviously half the number of uh, commander ninja but in in relativity bruce that's a uh, that's a huge huge that's amount a lot of time guys yeah very certified impressive. experts which is great thank you so much for joining us we appreciate you uh helping us out today indeed so can you give us a quick rundown while we switch into into the game and get everything set up can you ever give us a quick rundown of, of what we're going to be doing today? Ninja, is that for me or for you? Either one of you. You go for it, Blake. All righty. I'll take it. Um, we have filled up a carrier for you guys mm -hmm. to experience the carrier unloading in the LAVE system to the LAVE station, home of LAVE radio. Yep. And as we are working through the carrier unload, we can talk about our procedure and methodology of how we get things done sounds like a plan so what we'll do ideally if bruce can you invite me to a a multi-crew session please and then we'll go uh, from there i can give it a shot give it a whirl let's see what happens all right i've sent an invitation i have accepted said invitation great um i saw someone on youtube when I talked about the Galnet archive, said, oh, I never read Galnet. And honestly, I'm so disappointed in <laughs> you in particular, YouTube viewer. Um, even if you don't want to go to the site and read through all of the things on the archives, that's fair enough. But for anyone who doesn't know, and really you should know this, but if you don't, like, you know, no biggie. On your right panel here in the bottom left, there's this beautiful little button that says Galnet News. And when you select it, you'll get this, look at that little Gaunet animation, and here are all of the recent um, articles. And you'll see that there's a lot of mention about this Galactic Summit business, so 
just skim this stuff, listen to some of them, and it's well worth just getting involved to have a bit of flavor and yep. and see what's going on in the game a bit more. I just I, wanted to point that out for anyone who actually didn't really want to go to the site. It, it's it's literally right here. It's it's also worth mentioning that you can um if you're not if you're not a big fan of, of reading, um you can add them to your playlist. So while you're out mining or exploring, you can just listen to them. Um it's maybe if you've got a long expedition, just you know, bunging a lot of uh Galnet news articles to catch up on and, and off you go. That's absolutely right. Right. So, uh, as far as I can tell, myself and Bruce are currently parked in Lave Station. So, uh, Commander Ninja, can you give us a quick a quick rundown of, of what the current situation is of Operation Ida fixing, fixing Lave Station? We were going to choose Seoul to begin with, but yep. uh, there appears to be not an option. It's not still, still in trouble. Still in trouble. Something's going on. I wonder if uh, some Franzir people know more about this. Mm. <laughs> you Maybe. won't get anything out of us on this stream. <laughs> Drats. Yeah, so, so it do still Lave, be on fire, though. It does. For sure. Lave's so Lave. a popular uh, destination, so mm. we uh, decided to go for this one first. Um, it's also not permit locked, so it's open to everyone, and it's we thought it would be a good example for the stream. Yep, I think you're right. So, progress-wise so far, how are we doing? Well, Lave is approximately 31% completed. Okay. Repaired. While the other stations are all 2 to 7% complete <laughs> okay. individually. Just a bit of flexing. Just a bit of flexing on the live stream. That's a, that's oh, not a just 30%. Us. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm assuming there is obviously a lot of, not just Ida, who are, who are interested in helping Lave. It is obviously a very popular station from the community. I understand that. But let's, let's give yourselves credit where it's due. I think Ida is, is playing a big, a big part in that. Okay, so we're heading out, and uh, where do we need to where do we need to go now? If we want to start helping Operation Ida, um, you know, deliver some deliver some cargo, what do we need to be looking for? Is it a fleet carrier we need to go to? Is it another station? What's what's the play? For you guys personally, we have the Sound of Solitude carrier in the Lave system. Okay. The and Sound of Solitude. That's the one. It's a very somber name. Is there a story behind that, or does it just sound cool and that was good enough? I believe I forgot the story. <laughs> so there is a story. It's sounds, just more sounds mysterious. Sounds cool it is. Yeah. There's a lot of carriers with lots of stories. So interestingly, I know I was I was obviously researching this earlier. There are a lot of fleet carriers in Lave. I'm a lot. Most of the time there are because obviously it's a popular system, but even more so now. Um, I know that sometimes you can struggle to get your fleet carrier into into the system where the, the starport is. So what do you do in in that instance? So normally if, if we're really struggling and we can't get in, we'll park up nearby and um, start jumping from a very nearby system and direct people until we can get back in. Um, when it comes down to certain commodities, the fleet carriers help us massively in the first place, especially yeah. if you've got to travel several hundred light years to get a particularly valuable, um, rare commodity. So it's, they they do play a part. This is something that it's one of it's one of the questions that I've, I I wanted to ask. So I guess we'll start at the beginning with. Um, I guess Ninja might be best to answer this. How did how did Operation Ida come about? So um, the group was formed very shortly after the first attacks in the Pleiades. Um, the Oracle was the first station attacked, um, and Operation Ida was formed at that point. Um, I got in contact with Operation Ida as a different group. Um, mm -hmm. We were just basically seven or eight commanders who called ourselves Save the Oracle. And uh, we came onto the scene, and we could see that uh, another group called Operation Ida were trying to get people together and start repairing uh, Silene Orbital, which was a much bigger station in a very weird location in the Pleiades, which required quite a lot of distance. Yep. And it seemed like a difficult target. 
so talking to the leader um, at the time it was Fetley, he basically made the agreement that we would repair the Oracle if I came and helped and brought everybody and we all turned into one group. Mm -hmm. So that's how we started. Um, we all merged into Operation Ida within a couple of days of it being created. And um, within a month or so, Fetley had other um, things he had to do in yep. real life. He took a step backwards and I took charge. So, uh, yeah, go on, carry on. So the, the Oracle was our first main focus and that was a big station to repair mm -hmm. um, in a very awkward place. There were no carriers in those days. Um, local economies had very little. We had to move a lot of stuff from the bubble. Yeah. So I'm interested to chat. Let, please let us know if you were, you're you either part of Operation Ida now or you have been or you did help in that initial um, initial situation, the Pleiades. Were you one of the commanders that that helped out back then because it is interesting to see the growth that Operation Ida has, has, has had over the time and I kind of when did as I guess as far as in your mind when did Operation Ida become a a public sort of well-known group within the game were you were you private at first or were you always welcoming to other people always trying to get our name out there but um, it takes a while for the, the name to spread. At the time when people saw what was involved, uh, mm -hmm. the amount of quantities that need to be delivered, a lot of people said, no, thank you. Let it burn. <laughs> but but you, 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 guys, you guys held firm. Yeah, we held firm. We kept going. Um, we started making a lot of friends with different groups. We had lots of different people from lots of different parts of the galaxy contribute at different times, putting in their worth and helping us grow. And it's been amazing to, to watch it. I mean, from That's awesome. from from our side, Bruce as well. I, I know that Ida are one of the the groups that we like to keep an eye on and see, um, you know, how they. We we always say, I don't know how to word this. Whenever we set a challenge, and Arthur said this before, whenever we set a challenge, we like to see how the community, how quickly they resolve it. And Ida are one of the. Um, I don't want to say villains of our of our sort of <laughs> plans, but. You guys will will quickly, very quickly resolve any problem in the universe if it's something within your remit. So, just so you know, um, we do very much appreciate all the hard work that you that you do. In, in terms of uh, challenges and really smiting it, um, it was about two years ago, so April April the sixth, um, twenty nineteen. Yeah. Uh, we decided to repair a station, the first station that we could do in under twenty four hours after it was um, made repairable. Mm -hmm. And it's that. And Go on, carry on. It was repaired in three hours and 36 minutes. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Excellent. We, th we thought 24 hours was going to be a challenge. And then when everyone came crashing in, we were like, oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Super wow. So Very good. Nowadays, is that... What, what would you say is an average time to, to fix a station that Operation Ida are focusing on? A week would be a generous number. Yeah. I'd say it varies wildly because supply, mm -hmm. player involvement, um, day of the week, yeah. difficulty of sourcing the materials. So let's say a number between a station every three days and a station every week. I mean, that's still, that's still an impressive feat considering the amount of uh, cargo, <laughs> cargo that needs to be to be transported so bruce bruce has landed now on this fleet carrier could you give me um a quick rundown either one of you about you know what this fleet carrier has been up to today how it how it has all this cargo for us to um take back to the station how does that work sure i can take that our discord which is found at operationidon.com slash discord has multiple channels not only for the players looking to contribute, but also for the carrier owners themselves. We put out a request that we need a carrier owner who is able to fetch some items for us and a loading team that's able to fill said carrier. Mm -hmm. And we told them we need these items filled up and they did it in half an hour or so, which is approximately 20,000 tons. And then we stashed it over here just for you guys to experience the joy of unloading a carrier and getting a nice point of view. 
I mean, it's it's very impressive. Uh, some people in chat are asking for the URL. If you put exclamation point IDA, I-D-A, that should, at least on Twitch, that should give you a, a link to the Discord for Operation IDA. That's exclamation point IDA. Thank you, and operationida.com. Yep. So, Bruce, can you, uh, can you give us a rundown? What are you picking up? So... Yeah, just to talk us through it, guys. I've gone to the carrier services, headed on over to the commodities market, and there's one item there which is beryllium. Correct. Presumably you would like me to pick up as much as I possibly can. Absolutely. I'll do that then. All right, so I've bought a whole bunch of that. Actually, yep. I might even be able to do a little bit better because I had some limpets, Zach. I don't know if you gave me these for a specific purpose or just in case. Uh, no, just in case. You can you could get rid of them. I will. I see get you rid don't appreciate my uh, forethinking into your safety, Bruce. But feel well, free to get rid I of mean, them. I mean, it's always nice to have some limpets, but I want to do my part here. I'm gonna sacrifice that extra safety and. Uh, Grab five extra bits of beryllium. Yep. Fair enough. All right. I'm also going to disable the auto dock because that's a bit unnecessary. <laughs> well, you can't you can't auto dock in the damaged starport. So once you uh, that's true. Once you head into the starport, you'll have to do that manually. Yeah. Who do you take me for, Arthur? Me. <laughs> okay. Ridiculous. So. Bruce has, Bruce has picked up his uh, his cargo, and as as Bruce said, there was only one one uh, commodity in that in that fleet carrier. Can can one of you give us an idea of why that is? How do you um, how do you decide which fleet carrier has what, etc.? You know, who picks up what? Well, to explain that, I might have to give you a chronological breakdown. Go for of it. How we got those numbers in the beginning? We have scouts that would land at a station that transitions from burning to repairable, where they open up the local newspaper in that space station and are able to see the total quota required to rebuild that. Think of it as a chopping list or yep. recipe. Well, those numbers are added to a spreadsheet, which we log. In turn, we look, we look to see if those commodities are available locally or only far away. Mm -hmm. And then in turn, we will then decide if we will decide how many carriers we can allocate to each job. And okay. we know that carriers can hold, say, 20,000 tons and carrier volunteers, because everyone's a volunteer, yeah. can say, I, I want to take that job. I'll take those 20,000 tons and they can make that reservation. Right. That's interesting. So next question, similar, similar vein. If I'm a if I'm a volunteer and I have a fleet carrier, um, and I do want to get involved in Ida, is there anything, is there anything specific that my fleet carrier should be kitted out with, um, or is it anything goes as long as obviously you have the ability to to pick up cargo? Yeah, it's a, a, anything goes at the end of the day. Um, we appreciate any help, all help, every bit of help. If you can only fit a certain amount of cargo, that's fine. Um, our facility in actually organizing this um, lets us lets you specify how many tons you can actually provide. So we can work around that. Um, we can put that quota into our whole database or spreadsheets yeah. and work around you. Brilliant. On the topic of joining Operation IDA, um, with or without a fleet carrier, I know you mentioned the Discord earlier. Um, if anyone is interested, Oh, don't mind me just going for a loop of shame here. <laughs> um, if anyone is interested, um, should they just hop into that Discord, say hi, and, and and it's as simple as that? Or is there some kind of procedure for getting involved? Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you do join the Discord, there is like a quick FAQ at the beginning. But um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to shout out. We've got lots of lovely staff who will be happy to help you. Excellent. So I believe that was exclamation mark Ida right for our Twitch viewers, yep, Zach. That's the one. Other otherwise, what was the URL for anyone on YouTube? Operationida.com. That's sorry. That's all right. Great. 
And so, there's a link to our Discord at the very bottom of that site, I believe. Yes, yeah, so you can get there that way. Yeah, very bottom. But you're approaching now, Bruce. After I after am. the loop of shame. After the loop of shame. Also, I uh, locked on to Crispy Tater Tot's wake signal. <laughs> Hello, Tater Tot. Shout out. Hello, Seven. Okay, so... Good old Tater. Yeah, actually, let's, let's, let's quickly mention that, because um, Crispy Tater Tot... Is, is quite a um what's the word like an evangelist i guess or he's, he's very he likes to help out operation ida when when there's a situation he likes to stream it doesn't he absolutely and um there's several streamers like him who are really great in helping get our name out there um introducing people to our discord showing how much fun he can have and how much fun they can potentially have and yep. it's, it's lovely to see all that support yeah and that obviously Definitely crispy's the Sorry. Oh, go, 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 Sorry, go. Zach. I was going to say, Crispy's a very prolific uh, commander. If you haven't watched him on stream, guys, um, do check him out. Crispy Tate or Tot, I believe we have him in the chat on Twitch. Um, well worth a watch. So when I watch when I watch Crispy Tate Tot stream and, and what we're doing today, obviously fleet carriers play quite a big part in, in how Operation Ida operates in 3307, 3306. Could you... Uh, Ninja, could you give me an idea of, of how, and obviously don't, you don't need to go into a crazy amount of detail, but could you give me an idea of how the introduction of fleet carriers and, and sort of changes within the game have, have changed or made the operation more efficient over time? Like, how did, how did things happen back with before fleet carriers? Before fleet carriers, there was a lot of jiggery-pokery. Um, we had to rely a lot on certain systems, especially as we were out in the Pleiades, and we could run out of cargo very quickly. Yeah, um, we had to play the BGS a bit to make sure that certain systems were in good production states. Right. Other times, we actually had to install certain governments because, at the time, um, Aegis ran a lot of um, the Pleiades, and a lot of people didn't like them. They were trying to put them into lockdown. Yeah. Which was a disaster for markets. So we had to play a bit of our time making sure that they weren't in power in certain systems. Bumping up our factions, um, even applying for our own faction to get introduced, so and, that we could make, keep keep the place stable and keep right. the markets going. But there was always a point where we had to start venturing to the bubble, and we had to start really sort of helping people build up their ships, um, let them in, uh, unlock to technology such as the Guardian boosters, work out long distance builds. Yeah, um, I mean all that all that makes a difference, doesn't it? And then and then I guess carry on but obviously with fleet carriers that that also makes a big a big difference when that finally comes along fleet carriers made our work much much easier um we i don't think we would have even considered something like the witch head without them um that would have been a, a new unique nightmare on its own it would have been long distance carriers only with very very little that you could do in the local vicinity mm -hmm. and our applause to those players that did repair the witch head before carriers were invented definitely that's it's I can crazy, imagine, yeah. I can say I can imagine they were a big game changer for you guys. Um, obviously, in helping facilitate the work that you do, but uh, also just sort of changing the way you operate, I suppose, and organize things and dispatch people to go help. Yeah, it also brought a lot of uh, fresh air to the whole thing. Um, it was a new way of doing things, and suddenly people got that new sort of enthusiasm because it was a different way of doing things. Yep. So you might have noticed chat. Um, F's in the chat. We seem to have a bit of a server issue, but we'll try and get that back. But we can still just carry on talking while we wait for that. That's not a problem. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, next question. So, Operation Ida started kind of repairing um, Fargoid defense, you know, attacks from Fargoids. What is, we'll ask this individually, but first, I guess, what is Operation Ida's stance on, on Fargoids as a whole? I mean, generally, we're fairly neutral. Um, this does have a caveat. Um, <laughs> okay. Defending our defending our own systems and um, the player these. When new attacks came in and um, the Fargoids were attacking us, we did chip in and make sure that you know stuff didn't get really difficult. Yep. We do have plenty of people who are involved in AXI combat. Uh, we have great relationships with the um, AX hunters in the area, mm -hmm. and we're all very on close terms and we really appreciate the work they do and, and definitely made a huge difference in making our job easier 
Um, yeah. The same same line of thinking. They really appreciate us coming in and helping them repair because that's not their thing. They they love the combat. So generally generally we are neutral, but we are quite happy to chip in where needed. Um, we don't get too many Fargoid sympathisers, but we still welcome them. Hmm, that's fair enough. We're not. <laughs> you don't have it. You often... don't have it. A limit. No, we're often seen as the Red Cross in certain things. Um, we're, we're like a neutral Switzerland. We, we're here to help. We're not here to get too involved in politics. Um, we have generally a few times mediated between groups. Mm-hmm. We're always happy to try and you know make things work. Nice. You're there to sort of grease the wheels and help, help clean up the mess, but uh, you don't get involved too much in causing it in the first place, I suppose. Absolutely. Yeah. So, on a personal level, then let's let's take Operation Operation Ida out of it. Let's start with uh, Blake. Blake, how do you feel about about Fargoids? I think it's a fascinating challenge to try to fight them. Mm-hmm. The audio is incredible. The high predictions, though, can get a little bit excessive when you live in the Pleiades, and I'm at, I think I'm approaching my four hundredth Fargoid high prediction. Really? Wow. That's crazy. I've I've had zero, but I guess when you when you have three thousand hours in the game in the game by by law of, of of chance, it's probably it's probably gonna happen to you at some point, right? It's very heavy on the players that live in the Pleiades or which head. That's a good point, actually. So, obviously, Operation Ida has its um its its operation when when there are star points that need star points need help. Do you have um? BGS, do you have your own faction and stuff? How does that work? So we have our own faction. We own a few systems out in the Pleiades. And um, it's kind of like a bit of a part-time tease for those who want to take a break from things. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't have a huge presence. We like to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. But we also do have a bit of a legacy from the time that we were trying to ensure that we had a stable government in several places mm-hmm. where things weren't going to get messed around too much with lockdowns. It wasn't long after we introduced ourselves as a faction that um, lockdown rules got changed. It became system specific instead of factions wide. Right. Okay. So, so yeah, go on, carry on. The, the idea of getting ourselves established as a faction was really to stabilize the area, but not long after the, we got established, it was like, well, it didn't matter so much. So we didn't feel the need to spread too far. Yep. Well, that's fair enough. Not not everybody needs to uh you know take over take over the galaxy. I think I think you guys have have spread your name much further by doing by doing the uh the great the great acts of kindness <laughs> that you do on a uh, on a basis when they, when they need to be when they need to be done. Yeah, I'd like to think so. The other thing is um, that particular part of the galaxy, it's very crowded. There's a lot of people in a very small space. Exactly. So, okay, actually, you didn't answer. You didn't answer, Ninja. What's your What's your take on, on Fargoids? They're a very interesting species. Um, I had a lot of fun with uh, Fargoid sensors back in the day uh, when they were known as unknown uh, artifacts. Um, I may have been guilty of perhaps placing them in certain places that people didn't want them. <laughs> That's perhaps why they have a certain interest in me and like to high predict me often. But um, I'm a reformed man. I don't do that game anymore. Well, I see. You've put that all behind you, have you? From terrorist to uh, not a terrorist. <laughs> okay. So, um, chat. If you are also, if you do have questions um, for for the guys from Operation Ida, please do please do put them in the chat and. Guys, feel free to, to read or we'll, re- we'll read them out as well. Yeah, the servers are having issues. Um, we'll try and get them back as soon as possible, obviously. But we can just continue. We can just continue talking. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we may be able to get back in, but uh, if there is no luck, um, yeah, let's just let's just chat. That's all good. So, okay, let's say let's say I've joined Operation Ida. What's is it easier for me to to just sort of sit back, let let people, you know, do all the 
the difficult part of um, an organization organization and just chip in or or do you rec- do you recommend that people get stuck in straight away so you get 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 stuck in um we do try and make it as easy as possible um if anyone ever has questions we happily answer them if you're ever in doubt have a look at what's required in the we've got a particular channel which specifies um what's left of what goods if you if you're never sure go for the biggest one because you know there's <laughs> going to be lots of time to go and get that and and how many how many fleet carriers typically do you have operating on one starport at any time so let's say this current i know that i've been checking today and it seems to be there's like three or four starports at any point is that is that normal or is it usually less or more uh, fleet carriers at any time it's usually more i mean we've been quite restrained in this one i think because lave's quite hard to land in at the moment yeah so people have kind of taken a step back and so i think the last okay. last witch had one was about 15 or 20 involved at one point yeah it's it's interesting you mentioned lave um obviously there are other groups bruce um that are interested in in helping lave and obviously there were groups that helped rescue passengers um but i know that operation orange peel are i think i think from from what i've checked today they're also you know going to start ramping up the next stage of their operation but shout out to those guys for a great a great rescue uh operation yeah definitely so for anyone who hasn't heard about that that's the opera uh, the outfit from us and orbital actually come over to give lave a hand so um hashtag yeah for the mug Wotherspoon, absolutely <laughs> coming to help out the lave chaps um save their brandy okay so i'm back in the game for now bruce if you want to uh see Ooh, if you can get excellent. in and, and send me a multi-crew invite and we'll see if we can carry on but chat all right Chat, let's see if we've got any any questions for Operation Ida. Please, you know, send them through. I saw one there that um, asked how many stations have been repaired so far. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'll count if the website is correct and up to date, which i pretty sure it was last week. 159. And that's... So give me a rundown. 159. How many was was, was in the initial wave how many is recent, etc. Can you give me an idea of that, or is it kind of just all stuck together? I mean, that, that particular stat's all stuck together in yep. terms of what was done in the first wave. It's got to be like 40-something. Well, there was a lot of stations that were that needed help back then, right? Yeah, I mean, before we started breaking out of uh, Pleiades, we were only talking about 18 or 19, but we are talking real difficult operations there. Yeah. Um, with That's minimal true. local goods. It took us almost a year to break out of the Pleiades and then start moving back into the bubble. What were um, the key differences that made it more difficult back then? Just the size of the economies, uh, for starters. Um, a lot of the Pleiades stations, um, for example, Beryllium, which is a commodity which is regularly needed. Um, in the bubble, you can happily get 140,000 up to 300,000 in the majority of systems. You'd be lucky to get between two and 5k in a day in some of the Pleiades systems just because the economies were so small. Hmm. So we had to outsource. Um, instead of traveling something like 300 light years for some of the more rare goods like. Um, emergency power cells, you'd actually have to travel something like 700 to 800 uh, light years. That's a long way. Blimey. A very long way. Um, not to mention, during this time, there were quite a lot of tax against Aegis. There were times when refineries were complete lockdown, so we had to look at the bubble only yep. to get a lot of our supplies in. So, yeah, it was a very, very tough period, and um, we're still amazed about the whole operation that so many people came together, were so positive and pushed past that and really, you know, kept it going. Yep. Right, so what we're going to do, while the servers are kind of trying to get back up to speed, we'll just switch to Bruce's Bruce's gameplay. Alright, no problem. I will 
carry on the rest of the trip then. I think I was very close to Lave Station. Mm -hmm. So I'll crack on with delivering the uh, the beryllium. Okay, so after Lave, any idea what's next? Any idea the next station? Or is that kind of under wraps? You keep that as a as a secret internally until the time is right. Um, as it says on the website, the next repair target is as secret as our beryllium waffle recipe. <laughs> Is there a reason for that, or is it is it just you know it's easier that way? Um, several reasons. Uh, one, we don't really want people to jump the gun when they get a bit bored okay. and go, ah, you know, I don't really want to shift this terrible last item. Uh, the other thing is um, sometimes things change, so we're always keeping an eye out on what's going on the commodity markets. What might seem like a good idea twenty four hours ago might not seem a good idea now, for right. example. That's that's actually an interesting part of it. So, do you uh, you obviously you obviously look around and find the best price for a commodity within a within a reasonable area? If if there is no good price, um, you know, great price, do you buy anyway, or do you just say, okay, let's leave that for a while and then we'll come back to it later, or maybe we just do a different station first and then come back to it later? We try and keep one station in the focus um, at a time, mm -hmm. but there are moments where it starts getting challenging in terms of goods. Uh, we might rinse an area dry and s start seeing people making a loss. At that point, we, we we have to start warning people, okay, you can continue with this, but by the way, you will be making a loss. And you'll be surprised the amount of people who will say, don't matter, yeah. it's got to be done. I was going to say, because do you... Obviously, the main the main goal of Operation Ida and taking part is to repair the stations and get them back to full functionality. But do you make much money from this as a general, like if I was to just join and, and sort of transfer from fleet carrier to, to Starport, am I making much money or not? Is it just more of a case of helping out the station? It's more about the help. You might make a little bit, but it's yeah. never going to be something amazing. You're certainly not going to make anything near what you would do in certain activities like mining, yeah. um, combat. That's fair enough. But we find... A lot of the people who get involved aren't interested in that. If we do find someone who's coming at a, quite a low level, they want a little bit of bumping up, they want to help, um, they've only got a small ship, uh, we're quite happy to go and take them out for an hour or so, you know, mm -hmm. doing something a little bit more challenging, um, showing them a few tricks, getting them a little bit upgraded. We have had several members who come in at that sort of stage. Um, we help them, and in, in the return, they kind of help us because they, they can put in a little bit more in the future. Oh, that's brilliant. It's yeah. like a sort of mini, well, not even mini, but like a, an actual sort of mentor program for any newer players. So you wouldn't even dissuade someone who's quite new to the game and happens to be watching to get involved with Operation Ida then? Absolutely. From from day one, we've said, whatever you can bring, bring it. Um, if you want to stay at that level, if you don't want the help, that is up to you. But if you want a little bit of a helping hand, we don't mind. We, we're quite happy to do that. It's a bit of fun for us as well. It gives us a little something to do in between uh, repairs. Fantastic. Sorry, Zach, I cut you off there. No, that's fine. I was just going to kind of just carry on from that and just say, obviously, newer players might not have the funds, but if if you do have the funds, what is the typical, what is the typical ship that is used by, in, you know, from what from maybe Blake, you could answer this. What is the typical ship that you would see an Operation Ida commander using? The two biggest ships that we see are the Type Nine for its affordability and the Imperial Cutter for its straight line speed. Mm -hmm. And I know I know your personal choice is the Cutter, right? Yes, it is. And our official unofficial ship, when we were working in the Pleiades, which required 300 light years in each direction to go get our goods, we made these very niche builds of 46 light year hauling Imperial Cutters. Nice. Which not many, not many other people do such a thing. Can you explain? But it was perfect for our role. Can you explain the build a bit from memory of how you how you did that and and what was involved? When we were traveling from the bubble to the Pleiades Nebula, we did not see much space traffic, and our objective was to decrease the time it took for us to make a delivery, which sometimes were forty minutes around trip, mm -hmm. and so we would lightweight everything and it also started out before not only before carriers but also before the 
Guardian Frame Shift Drive Booster. Yep. And the cutters of the day, and or the engineered Type 9s, we would allow our players to say, if you want to do these long runs of 300 light years in each direction, you can. Otherwise, you can drain the local economy from the Pleiades. And in the same way, we're kind of doing the same thing. When we build our spreadsheets and we say, this is local and this is not local, mm -hmm. you get to choose which one you want to do. Also, starport versus planetary landing. Some yeah. people love those planetary landings. I mean, it's, I mean, it's up to the it's up to the player. It's good that it's good that you you give options anyway. So, Bruce, looks like you're coming in. You're coming into land. Looks like you're I doing am, it yes. pretty well at the minute. Oh well, now you've said it. Yep. Everyone, just let's focus on Bruce's landing. No pressure. Cheers. I appreciate that, mate. Last because no I problem, I know but... you can do it. Oh well, your faith in me was uh, well placed this yep. time. Thankfully. So now that I'm here, just for anyone who hasn't done something like this before, um, what do I do with all my fresh beryllium? What we would ask players to do is to log their delivery on our Discord so that we could give credit to them, not only for contributing, but also for, for them to be added to the Operation Ida leaderboard. And in order to log your delivery on our Discord, you find the channel which is titled Deliveries for Such and Such Station. At that channel, you then type in your tonnage, the commodity name, and the current in-game time. And that allows us to do information such as who delivered the most, who delivered the most often, who traveled the furthest, who did the most deliveries in a small ship, because we still appreciate those guys, and also, what time of day is the busiest? And it turns out it's pretty much UK afternoon evenings. Interesting. But in terms of actually um, selling it, all you need to do is sell it. There's no additional requirements like in a CG where you have to sign up beforehand. It's just a simple act of selling it in the commodities market. Excellent. Right. Well, I will go ahead and drop off the 264 brilliant. Nice. It looks like you're making doing a profit. My part. Small profit. Yeah, there will be some change that has found its way into our, our pockets <laughs> after this sec. Nice. Let's just uh, sprinkle that onto the pile of credits that um, <laughs> <the account> has. <laughs> Which is actually conveniently hidden by my uh, camera at the moment. <laughs> so Yembalit right. says, can someone explain what's going on? Uh, uh, yes, we can. Let's leave that to Ninge, though. Can you just give us a quick rundown of, of the current situation, Ninge? What's happening? What are uh, Operation Ida doing? Just, just a 20-second you know, overview. What's the current situation? So um, a week ago, stations were attacked um, and damaged. Since then, a week has passed, and they're now able to be repaired. Now, to repair them, we need to sell certain goods to them. You can find these if you visit the station um, itself and have a look at the local services. It'll actually tell you on the first message what commodities are required. Or you can also find this information on our Discord. We keep a running tally of exactly what's needed. So there's several commodities out there that are needed to repair the station. Mm -hmm. Once you've uh, delivered them, sold them to the station, um, if you've done this before, server update on next Thursday, this station will come back into action and be repaired again. Yep. And when a station is... This is another actually important part about your fleet carriers. When a station is, is damaged, you um, you can't repair your ship there, can you? So it's it's important sometimes that one of one of your fleet carriers has, has an ability to, to repair um, your ship. Yes, um, because you can still be damaged and there's no facility at the station to repair. Yeah. The other thing we do advise pilots is to um, mind their flying and behave uh, whilst making delivery because the ability to pay off your fines is disabled at a station under repair. <laughs> so so I know that I noticed this in the Discord server. You do actually give a lot of good information to, to pilots. 
you 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 basically put the nearest station or a station in that system that you can you can pay a fine if if you unfortunately become victim <laughs> to some very yeah. very strict law enforcement at the time we've all done it even if you're just going over 100 um yeah and hit something oops then you can't sell your gear until you've paid off your fine so we make sure that information is freely available and we have seen some very amusing examples in the past of uh, where that's all gone wrong and explosions <laughs> how how has that happened i, I guess you've just been uh, you got stuck in the mail slot maybe i guess with the with the big ships not, not requesting permission yep panicking getting stuck in the slot someone else comes out yeah and suddenly a big mess we have had a few events where we've had so much traffic that we've actually had to get a couple of people to be air traffic control and start ushering people in quietly <laughs> one at a time. Because I we've we've been playing today in your uh, private group, right? And this is something that obviously can you give us a rundown of how you get into that? Is it is it sort of after a while you get accepted into the private group or? You know, is it straight away? Because obviously this is a good place if you want to join in Operation Ida and, and help people. This is maybe a nice private group to be a part of to, to avoid interdictions and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's um quite an open policy. Um, we do police it quite regularly um, for what we do. It's a peaceful environment for people. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a nice community environment. Um, at the end of the day, we started out being a community to uh, do one particular thing, but... Um, We've got a lot of people who hung around because it's a nice, welcoming, friendly place. Yeah. So we do we do police it, but um, it's not too hard to get in. If if you need somewhere quiet to uh, do what we do, it's a perfect place. Nice. I guess the last question that I've got is is when when you know repairs aren't ongoing, um, is is Operation Ida and, and the Discord server still still somewhere to hang out? Is 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 there anything ongoing, any events, or do you just kind of chill out, play the game together? How does that look? It's quite an active Discord. Um, when we do have events, they'll be posted, they'll be announced. Um, back in December, we had a big charity drive where we spent a couple of weeks. Um, not just, um, well, there wasn't too much to repair at the time, but um, we were getting together and even just joining in CQC, for example. Mm -hmm. um, or getting together and doing a bit of a convoy run, just having a lot of fun, and uh, also getting, encouraging people to raise money for a good cause. Amazing! Another another great another great piece of work from Operation Ida. <laughs> okay, so I think that pretty much wraps up all the time we've got. So um, obviously, we want to say a big thank you to Commander Blake A and Commander Ninja for joining us. Uh, so once again, thank you guys. Um, if you do want to join Operation Ida, you can put exclamation point Ida in the chat on Twitch, and that will give you a link to join the Discord server. And uh, uh, Ninja, could you give us a quick rundown of the URL again? Sorry, if you're on YouTube. Yeah, if you just uh, search for OperationIda.com, we've got a website which has all our stats on it, and uh, we've got a Discord link at the very bottom of the page. Yeah, so um, this pretty much... All we've got for you today, Bruce. Any any final words on today's on today's stream? Any any words of wisdom for the chat? Oh no, I'm running very short on wisdom these days, Zach. Right. Um, however, I would like to extend another big thank you to um, the guys from Operation Ida for joining us, um, as well as the whole group for all of your efforts. They are greatly appreciated. We really hope some people from the chat have been inspired to uh, to join mm -hmm. and valiantly support your good deeds. Um, Otherwise, just thank you very much for watching, everyone. Um, we appreciate your time and hope you've enjoyed the stream. Um, get involved in helping out these stations. It's a, it's a good cause. And uh, thank you and good evening, I suppose. We'll catch you on Tuesday for our next stream. Yep. So once again, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, thank you, Mods, for moderating, as always, doing a great job. And please stick around just for a minute or so while we find somebody to raid. So please, obviously, be nice to the person we raid and say hello and all that, all that nice stuff. So until next time, uh, 07 Commanders. 07.